So we're going to jump back to chapter one and do linear equations. So this first example, um, we're just solving for x. You have to distribute a couple times before you start. Um, technically, there's a negative one. Oh, goodness. Technically, there's a negative one in front of both of these sets of parentheses, so you start by distributing those. So you'd have 5x minus 7x, um, negative one times negative four is plus four. You have this minus two out on the end. And then kind of similar over here, you're distributing this negative one, so minus three x minus two. Then you'd wanna combine like terms so I have 5x minus 7x, um, positive 4 minus 2, and 5 minus 2 over here. So you combine all of that, 5x minus 7x is negative 2x, positive 4 minus 2 is positive 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, and then you have this minus 3x. Um, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. It doesn't really matter if you chose to do it a different way. We would get the same answer. So I would have x plus 2 equals 3, and then subtracting 2 from both sides, x equals 1. Okay, example 2 um, has fractions, which I know a lot of the time people just hate. So the easiest way to do these is to clear out your fractions and just get rid of them. The way you do that is you're going to look at your denominators and you're going to find um, the least common denominator. And so we've done this before, but just in case you forget, you kind of want to list them out as prime factors. So for example, um, remember prime numbers are always just um, a number multiplied by itself. So like 2 is 2 times 1, um, 3 is 3 times 1. 5 is 5 times 1, 7 is 7 times 1. Those are all considered prime. But I skipped a couple, like I skipped 4 because 4 is 4 times 1 and also 2 times 2, it's not considered prime. So these are considered the prime numbers. Um, so 2, its prime factors are 2 and 1. I'm just going to put the 2. For 4, if I list it out as prime numbers, it's 2 times 2. And then we kind of like looked and figured out the least common denominator. So I would have to use this two. Um, once I use it, I don't have to count it again here, but I still have another two. So the least common denominator is four. And you probably didn't have to do work on that one to figure that out. You probably knew that just off the top of your head. But in case you didn't, that's like the process for figuring it out. So if I want to clear these fractions out, I'm going to multiply every single thing by 4. So you can write it however you want. Um, I, I kind of just like to do like this, times 4, times 4, times 4. I'm multiplying everything by 4. So um, I'm going to write it out a lot. If you want to skip some steps, you don't have to. Um, so 1 half times 4, I end up with 4 over 2x. Uh, negative 5 times 4 is minus 20. I'm going to multiply these two together. 3 times 4 is 12 over 4x. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Look at that. All your fractions are gone. So that is the easiest way to solve something um, when you're given fractions is just to multiply by the least common denominator and get those to all clear out. Okay, so then here's another one. Um, I have 4 and 12. Um, the least common denominator, if you want to list it out, I'll just show you the process. So I have 4. 4 can be written as 2 times 2. 12 could be written as 2 times 2 times 3. Um, I have to use these 2s. So I would have 2 times 2. I already wrote these down. I would need to write down this 3. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. This is what I want to multiply by. If you already saw that off the bat, that's great. You don't have to do that extra work. I'm going to go through and multiply every single thing by 12. 
Um, so here I end up with 12 over 4x. Here I end up with 12 over 12x. Here I end up with 36. 12 divided by 4 is really 3. 12 divided by 12 is 1. Subtract x from both sides. Divide by 2. x is negative 18. The next one's the exact same idea, except now you have variables in your denominator also. I'm just going to do the same thing by listing out prime factors just so that you can see it. If that is something that you don't need to do and you can figure it out without doing that, great, skip it. So um, they're actually already all prime. So I would just, I'm just going to write them out and then we'll like go through it. So if I start at the top, I would need this 3. So I'm going to go down here and write that down. Um, I wouldn't need to write down this 3 because I've already used it. I would also need to write down an x. That means I don't have to count this x because I've already used it. But I haven't done this 2 yet, so I do need to include the 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, so I want to use 6x, and I'm going to multiply everything by 6x. So basically, you just have to make sure that you count every single number when you go through these. Um, so I'm going to multiply by 6x here, by 6x here, 6x, 6x. So then I get 12x divided by 3x plus 6x divided by 2 equals 24x divided by x and plus 24x over 3. So when you start going through, your x's cancel. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That x doesn't cancel, so you have to write it down. Here, your x's cancel. You just have 24. Um, 24 divided by 3 is 8. X's don't cancel, so you have to write it down. And then you're just moving things around. So I'm going to start by subtracting 3x from both sides. I get 4 equals 24 minus 5x. Subtract 24 from both sides. No, plus 5x. I apologize. I get negative 20. Divide by 5 x is negative 4. A little tougher still, when you get here, um, you might have to factor if completely necessary. Um, up here, since these match, you don't need to do any factoring. You just multiply the numerators by x minus 1. Um, just make sure you put it in parentheses. And I am um, going to rewrite the whole thing for you just so you can see what's happening. So I have 3x times x minus 1 over x minus 1 for that one, 2 times x minus 1, and then I have equals 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. I wouldn't distribute until you go through and cancel things out. So these are going to cancel. So you have 3x. Nothing cancels here, so I'll just leave it. And then these are going to cancel, so you get 3. Then after you've canceled, you can go ahead and distribute and finish solving. And I'm assuming this end part, like here on, that you're totally fine. It might just be this top.
top part of clearing out those fractions, that's kind of going to be, you know, the newer part or what you need some help with. If it looks like something over here, you are going to want to factor those denominators first. So if we don't factor, it's going to make things really tough. So if you look at this first one, this denominator, um, I could factor out a 3. So I could rewrite this as 3 and then x plus 6, because if you think about distributing that back in, I would get 3x plus 18. The second one, I can factor out a 2, and then left over, I have x plus 6. And as you can see, it's working out really nicely because these are matching. And then last one, um, if I factor out an x, I would be left with x plus 6. Okay, so factor first. Then you want to figure out what your least common denominator would be. Um, I'm going to do it without rewriting if you don't care. So when you have a situation like this, just in case you forget the process, you write down the entire first denominator. So I write down 3 and then x plus 6. And then you imagine going through, and you don't need to write down 3 again, so you could kind of like get rid of those. You also don't need to write down x plus 6 again. So I've already written that down. I still need to write down this 2. Um, and then I still need to write down this x. And then you multiply all that stuff together. So I'm going to erase, oops, I'm going to erase these little slashes that I did. I was just doing it to show you how I was getting that least common denominator. Okay, so if I multiply all this together, um, I have 3 times 2 times x, so that's 6x, and then x plus 6. I'm going to leave it like that. Don't distribute, just leave it. And you're going to go through and multiply every uh, numerator by this. Again, if you can do that without writing it out, totally fine with me. I'm just doing it so I can show you what I'm doing. So here I'm going to have 6x, x plus 6, all over 3 times x plus 6, minus, same thing, 6x, x plus 6, all over 2 times x plus 6, and lastly, 6x, x plus 6, all over x, x plus 6. Okay, I totally get this looks insane, but do not be scared. It's all going to cancel out really easily. So these x plus 6s are going to cancel. And then actually 6 over 3 is really just 2. So here I have 2x. So like look how nice that is. And then right here, x plus 6s cancel. 6 over 2 is really 3, so I have minus 3x. Over here x plus 6 is cancel, x is cancel, equals 6. So I know it looks really intimidating at first, but it ends up looking really nice once you get everything canceling. So 2x minus 3x is negative 1x, divide by negative 1, um, x equals, I don't know where to write, x equals negative 6. 